Are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am B2. It's 90s, 90s reflection, reflection time. Ooh. Be my guest, be my guest, be my guest with Sean Boy Joe. Hello and welcome back to the Be My Guest podcast channel with me, your boy, Sean Boy Joe. It's an early start for me today and a bit of a late one for my guest. Today I'm joined by someone down under in sunny Melbourne, Australia to celebrate 30 years of an Aussie-born show that quickly became a worldwide smash hit. The only thing that links me and my guest today is the fact I should still be in my pyjamas and he probably should be in his. That is, of course, the fabulous Nicholas Oplosky. He's joining me today to talk all about the bananas in pyjamas and what it was like to play one half of the Aussie duo. How are you, Nick? Be my guest. Hi, Sean. I'm very good. Thank you. And um, you're coming in loud and clear across the Indian Ocean. So, um, you know, Fabulous. What I'll do is I'll correct my surname, which is Apolski. Apolski. Uh, my, oh, right. my father was Polish, and Apolski is about the uh, simplest of the uh, Polish surnames, <laughs> considering all my friends were Bukowiak and Sielewski and Yashevich uh, and the unpronounceable names, so, right. so uh, I can lucky there. The easiest name that uh, I can't seem to pronounce, but uh, yes. Um, nevertheless, um, what an uh, honour and privilege it is to not only be talking to you from Australia, but actually talking to yourself. Um, I want to start um, way back, sort of from the beginning, and we'll sort of go down the timeline as such. Um, I always ask my guests this, and this might be a, a fascinating chat today because, um, you know, we're going to learn a little bit about Australia and the culture. Um, I want to know what it was like for a little Nick growing up. Uh, were you from that sort of entertainment background? No, not at all. I was from um, suburban Adelaide, uh, right. the capital city of South Australia. It's, um, it's a very small and very uh, suburban Catholic life. And uh, I'd never even left the state until I was 18 and moved across to Sydney to attend um, NIDA, the National Institute of Dramatic Art. So um, there was no theatre. I only started creeping into into the acting as a hobby uh, when I was about 17, when I auditioned wow. for an amateur play, uh, which was The Miracle Worker. I was just talking about Helen Keller. And uh, I got the part. It was a terrific part for a first time actor because it's the main character's brother and so he had about four good meaty scenes across the uh, across the evening. You don't have to carry the play, but you get a chance to do some some uh, you know good emotional work in a, in a very well made play. Oh okay. So we got off to a very bad start because the uh, opening night of that play, I remember the little girl playing Helen Keller, if you remember the movie that the the big climax is blowing yes. and um, Helen is moving around the kitchen table, picking at everyone's dinner plate. And the teacher, Annie Sullivan, forces her to sit down and we're going to eat lunch. Right. But, um, you know, um, um, adults. And Helen doesn't understand this, so there's a big fight. On our opening night, our little girl twisted her arm. The, the, the house lights come up, and there's a doctor in the house, and I was thinking, my first time on stage. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Mm. That's a bit of a way to start, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One to put in the old autobiography. Um, definitely. Um, so, yeah. So, you started out in the world of theatre then? Yeah, and in fact, that's where I've done most of my, um, most of my acting um, has been in theatre. Um, generally, over the years, too, the small, um, small, uh, might see 100 people, 150 right. people, occasionally, once in a while, 
from the ground of the Sydney Opera House or yeah, you know, wow. some of the cities in Melbourne. Uh, generally, you know, the, the acting career hasn't gone off extremely well for me, and so I'm still kicking around the smaller theatres around uh, Melbourne, especially. Do you prefer performing in the theatre to doing television? I know it's a very, very different world. Right. Tried, you know, I wish I wish that had um, come through for me and, and kept me uh, in television, but it didn't. But um, but the, the times I've had on television, uh, it's um, it's a much more comfortable environment than theatre. It's ever changing, you know. So you're you're, you're doing the thing for a day or something, and then yeah. you're doing something new. It could be a new location. And yeah. That. In theatre, you could be doing the same thing every single night. Right. Uh, which has its own challenges and rewards, but, uh, but television has always been really exciting to, to, to kind of see. Yeah. You know, it's kind of fun and exciting. Um, yeah, so I haven't, I haven't been in the TV show for a couple of years, but um, right. uh, I've always loved the times when I was there. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's I think, fascinating. I think, actors, I think some of the actors are luckier than any other, uh, any other people. You know, right. They're luckier than film actors and theatre actors. Yeah. Uh, I think the actors that, actors that, you know, can lock into a soap opera or something for a decade, I reckon that's just, just perfect. Right? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And it's, and it's fascinating. You're one of the very first people to say they prefer doing TV to acting because a lot of the guests that I've spoken to just love the theatre and love that audience reaction. And, and But it's really interesting to hear you talk about um, TV, but that's the way sort of things go. And from theatre you went obviously into um, television. So talk to us about that transition from the stage to the screen. This was, um, you know, when I came out of NIDA in 1984, at the age of 21, and then I spent, um, I was about, I was sort of, you know, my career was uh, going nowhere, really, for about nine years. But I right. was doing enough little things to, to keep me in there, keep thinking, oh, you know, well, maybe my life is going to change. You know, mm. It's not like nothing is happening. There was always you know, one job ahead or a play a year or a put on TV. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, um, you know, kind of, you know, all through my 20s, kind of scrambling and having to uh, do other things, to, to, uh, a bit of acting teaching and a lot of bar work and and stuff like that. But, um, but always enough an acting job to keep me thinking, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'm still in there. Yeah. I could see a, a huge uh, attrition rate and I could see other people falling by the wayside, but I would always have some little job ahead of me. See how it goes. Right. And then, of course, um, yeah, then, of course, my luck really changed for me uh, when I was 29, I think, and uh, an audition came up to audition for this kid TV thing. They're going to make a series of bananas in pajamas. Mm -hmm. spin off of um, toys on Play School. And uh. I thought, sure, it's going to be fun. It might be a good story. You know, so I might play the giant banana. And, well, I got the part, and it uh, became a big part of my life for off and on for 10 years, I guess. So that was your first but, television role? Right. Guest episodes where I was, you know, sick in hospital dramas or. Oh, I see. Or, uh, I was never the criminal of the cop shows, the Australian cop shows. I was never the criminal, but I was often the victim. Right. You know, I'd either get beaten up in the first scene or, uh, you know, my kid would get kidnapped or something like that. Right. Right. Um, but for now, it was the first extended period uh, of uh, employment. You know, I see. You mentioned before in our pre-chat that you worked a little bit for a few episodes on Play School. Was that before the Bananas in Pyjamas came that about? Came up after they came up through Bananas. Because, uh, I see. Uh, ABC in Sydney. Right. And uh, I was around the ABC and the children's department. There was, there was other producers there for Play School, but they saw me around the set. Mm -hmm. And uh, got me to audition for Play School. And, and uh, so I did... Not many episodes, about half a dozen episodes, right. and one live performance of it, which I remember at the, uh, 
the domain in Sydney, a big outdoor wow. area for the, for the um, in front of the museum, and, which must have had yeah. 50,000 people rallying. So that was about the, the biggest crowd I've ever stood in front of. I wow. I remember that. Fantastic. And you mentioned um, the characters, uh, the bananas in pyjamas coming from play school, and of course, you know, those characters um, developing from the famous or traditional children's rhyme, the bananas in pyjamas. So is that how the sort of series developed? Yeah, it was. That, um, I think the whole, um, that, as you say, the toys came from a children's song, which was... Um, uh, or the rhyme, I'm not even sure it was the song, or just the rhyme. Right. And which was written by Terry Blyton, who was Tina Blyton's nephew. Oh, okay. And, um, I did know, not know that. Uh, okay. I think it was an invention way back when, but ABC Australia, decades ago, picked them up as um, soft toys. And right. And used them as, as props, like Humpty Dumpty. And, yeah. Um, various dolls on on the play school set for many years before a producer had the idea to spin these out into yeah. uh, five live action children's shows. Yeah. And uh, that was about 1990, I think it was. Right. Yes, because we are uh, celebrating 30 years this year. So the first series was produced in 1992. Can you believe that? 30 years ago. Um, and it still has this lasting impact um, of so many generations. Um, such a, as you said, simple characters, simple format, um, based upon the song. Um, so um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, um, you've spoken how the series came about. You worked for the show for a good 10 years, if not longer. Um, what was the What was the key to the show? Why was it... It was one of those shows that lasted for years. What was the key to its success? I guess it was the um, something. I mean, who knows? Because so many, uh, especially back then too, there were so many kind of stuff. Forward. Yeah. Shows and the play was we had when pumped out of right. a four. I can remember, but somehow the bananas took off. It, it, I don't know. Did they like the, the like the bright, easy shape? It was kind of a cheekiness to the bananas. Yeah. I think that's important with uh, any children's program. You want to, you know, as a parent or an adult or a grandparent, you want to be able to sit there and, you know, enjoy the program perhaps as much as the child is, you know, especially if you're summoned to sort of watch it. Yeah, right. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. But um, clearly it was, uh, you know, it was well written and uh, great production values of it. So that's, I think they look a little war now, but at the time they were great. Absolutely. And this was all live action because younger audiences now only know them as sort of a computer cartoon. Yes, that's program. correct. That's right, yes. Um, live action ones haven't been repeated in Australia for a long time. No. Know. Right. No, yeah. I think it's, in a way, it's nice that the characters are being introduced to a new audience, but also you have a sense of longing to see how it was originally. I think when you take something that's produced so well and visually, it looked stunning. I mean, the costumes, the characters, for its time, I mean, for 1992, the whole production looked very ahead of its time. And to sort of take it into a sort of animated form, which is where we're going now, as I said before, because it's easier to dub in animation in other languages, I think it loses that essence that it yeah. once had, the charm of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it can relate to a, a live action. 
Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I remember taking my um, cousin to see the bananas in... Because this is just goes to show, you know, how the generations... I went to see the bananas in pyjamas live when I was younger, probably about 20 odd years ago. And about four or five years ago, I took my cousin to see the bananas in pyjamas, which was wonderful. And I said, I am old enough to remember when the bananas in pyjamas looked exactly like that on the TV, not, not the animation. Um, you know, which was, yeah, and not that, to be able to sit with him and watch him get as much enjoyment out of two characters as I did, you know, 20 years prior was just magical to see because it doesn't really happen nowadays in kids' television. And and as and I guess as um, you're going to talk to me now, I guess I'm going to ask you about the characters themselves and with all characters they progress and as you get to know your character better and I guess as you get to work with the people more um, in the production, you know, as time goes on, you know the characters better, you know them well, you get to explore more areas in terms of storylines. And also, I guess you build that trust and you're you're sort of allowed to do more things, I guess, as time goes on. Oh, I, I absolutely remember the, um, the evolution of the characters right. uh, from the, the early pilot days to where I finished 300 episodes later. Goodness me, 300 yeah. episodes. Um, you had 300 episodes, and then they ran for another 70 episodes with a different uh, actor. I went on to something else. Um, right. Which also felt you know, really weird to give up the character after 300 episodes. Really? Oh, you know, that's a big No, it felt very odd. But, um, but, you know, well, like, I didn't know that. So how long were you actually on the show for? I was on and off. It stretched over almost 10 years, I think, to be... It might be like a whole year that we didn't do anything. Or we might right. make the odd appearance or make, we make a, a, um, a record or, you know, a CD okay. or something. But they may not, we may not be in the TV for yeah. uh, 12 months, but then we'd have... Uh, uh, and um, Ken, who played B1, yes. he likewise didn't do the last bunch of episodes. I went on to... I got a, a year on Neighbours. So I oh, yes. That right. I to Yes, there we go. Um, and we'll certainly come on to uh, Neighbours soon because I think us Brits are in a little bit of trouble um, as you sort of rely on us to keep Neighbours afloat there. Um, but we will sort of come on to that shortly. But I was, I was really fascinated. I didn't know... We were talking about how the characters evolved. How they, they began as, as very dopey right. uh, children. And after right. Many many episodes. Ken and I, with B one and me, we thought they ended up as squabbly old women because right. um, they'd be kind of the, um, not angry with each other, but they could bluster with each other, get a little annoyed with each other. Right. Um, I mean, that's what brothers do, I suppose. It shows a real. Yeah, that, yeah. Right, and they were and they were identical twins who sort of did everything together. Of course. Uh, the bananas will be more various bananas are most frustrated or or uh, overexcited or yeah. sleepy or um, you know, a little little niggly with each other. Of course. Sometimes. I mean that happens with all characters as they progress. I mean you as as the as I guess you've got the reassurance, as you said, from parents, you've got the trust of the kids watching. That's the audience that trusts a show it gives you confidence to maybe divulge into more deeper uh, storylines or more sort of, you know, deeper episodes. A lot of them really focused on children's well-being and as well as the national curriculum. I guess also it was, it had that element of fun and if you were to put it into a category, yes, you would say maybe it's a children's situational comedy. But it had that sense when you was watching it in those short five minute episodes um, that you were learning something here and there was a much deeper meaning and as stories go you always have the beginning, middle and the end and that's how it yeah. evolves. Yeah. It's, funny, it's funny you say that because um, it, one of the original briefs was that it, it won't 
be an educational show, that the ABC has other shows for children that, that right. just, uh, grow them or teach yeah. them something. This will be a five-minute sitcom for kids. We'll just make the two- and three-year-olds yeah. giggle. But when the show got bigger and they tried to, and did indeed sell it to um, American television stations, Right. It had to be sold as some kind of educational. I see. Um, you know, it had to be good for the children. So, so I remember the producers. They had to kind of go through every episode. In this episode, you learn about sharing. You learn about right. You know, things. You learn cooperation, problem solving together. Um, but, but the initial brief of the show was that that sort of stuff is covered in play school. This will be wacky comedy for the toddlers. Right. Okay. Well, that's quite, that's interesting. Because, um, yeah, I, okay, I, I didn't know that. That's quite interesting to hear that. Um, starting out sort of as educational. Oh, so you know, but the message, so the messages that you get from it, or the things yeah. you get from it, you know, cooperation, sharing, looking up, right. looking at other, um, although, I wouldn't say an accident, but, um, but we're not, we're not the, the brief behind Right, and I guess all the characters in that show, um, they were the perfect foil for, um, I guess, for the bananas to bounce off. You had the wonderful um, characters such as the teddy bears that sort of lived in the, in the house, sort of down the road from them, to so Lulu, who was this, uh, she was French, I believe. French, yeah. French, yes. Yeah. So, Right. Uh, job with it, but she's on after the first five or six episodes where they replaced the original actress who, who played the part kind of maternally to the to the uh, bananas. She was she had kind of a I wouldn't say patron, she wasn't patronising us, but but she would she would sort of protect us and and look after the bananas. Yes. And that wasn't what they wanted. You know, someone who was kind of equally on the same wavelength of the bananas. They didn't want sort of a, a semi growing up figure, they wanted another kind of child. So, right. So Taylor came in and played the French. Right, okay. I think it, it sort of worked perfectly that she was because not only that, she she was the sort of mediator to look after everybody. Um, you know, even some of the characters that were more mischievous like the rat in the hat. Um <laughs> Who was quite? You, I suppose you have to be very careful in terms of um, um, children's television how you portray a character like that. Oh, the rat is a fantastic uh, character. He came in after. He's not in the first series. No. But he comes in, in about thirty episodes in, I think. Right. When uh, it was decided the show needed uh, a villain to you know, Yeah. Someone who's you know, rat was so cheeky and sneaky. And That's it. No. After, so after, after a bunch of episodes, it was decided the show needed a, uh, a villain for all intents and purposes, and the rat, rat in a hat came. And what was the reasoning by the, uh, behind the programme only being five minutes long? Uh, I think it originally it had a, a time slot to fulfil. Right. I can't remember what preceded it, you know, but it had to go on at like at five to four in the afternoon. Right. Oh, I see. Yes, right. But that was always joyous having the five-minute slots because uh, I don't know over there, but it's it, more so over here. Um, we would get about half an hour's worth of five or six episodes back to back, um, sort of every day. Just keep repeating it again and again, um, and that was the. That was the matter, and it almost seemed like it would just go on forever, and then I'd have my auntie coming in. Is this still on? Um, yes, it's another episode after the thousand. <laughs> well, that and the magic of VHS tapes, meaning that you can rewind back again and again. I'm sure you've seen this episode a hundred times. Yes, I have, but I love it. Um, and 30 years, can you believe that 30 years this year... Um, will be when the Bananas in Pyjamas started. Wow, well, I do remember, that especially when the show began to be um, 
yeah. you know, successful in that it was sold, you know, it was went around the world. I think yeah. every country in the world was, um, was playing it. So, and we were always given one more series, and we just joked to each other, you know, well, I'm not going to do this for much longer. Yeah, exactly, how long can you keep this up? I'm uncomfortable, and it should, you know, the yeah. costumes are heavy and hot, and, and there'd be a lot of movement, a lot of dance. You, were you in the costumes yourself? Right. Were you in the costumes yourself? Mm-hmm. Oh, you were in the actual costumes? Yeah, yeah. Zipped up in those big things. And wow. We'd do the show with, uh, we'd have a little microphone in our helmet. Right. Uh, but then we would go in a few weeks later and, and re it, re it Right. I see. Wow, okay, I did not know that. So you were actually in the costumes. There you go, you were you, you the full banana experience. There we go. Yes. Right. Right. Do you find it do you find it easier? sort of being in the costume because you've got complete control of the character. Whereas I've spoken to people who have gone, actually, you know, it's really difficult standing in a booth watching somebody else play essentially me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, uh, so there's a bunch of episodes that I wasn't in the costume for but would read really that it was right. very tricky to, right. to match the body language. Right, okay. Right. So yeah, so as we said, 30 years uh, this year, international, all around the world, I mean, not just with the television series, but producing live shows, um, CDs, I mean, they sort of in their own right became pop stars in a way because they were re- releasing music videos and, and, and kids up and down the world were singing. I'm a terrible singer, but I've got two gold records. Yes. Right. right, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bananas in pajamas. Right. Christmas album and nursery rhymes or something, you know? Yeah. And they sold over 35,000 copies of yeah. Australia or something, enough to give you a gold record. And I've got two of them stuck up. There we them. have it then. So it just goes to show you don't need to be a good singer in order to get a gold record. Right. When, you, when you got the phone call or whatever to say, actually, this is, you know, we're on to something here, and not just in Australia, but every country wants a bit of what the bananas are doing. How was that feeling? It was, it was fantastic to be a part of anything that's right. uh, you know, taking off. It was great. And um, as I said, you know, I was 29 when my career had been... Were you young? Yeah, 20, that's my age now, goodness yeah, gracious. So, so I was, you know, real happy to have something that was... Yeah. Right. And, um, well, there you go. Uh, you know, it, was, it was even mentioned in an episode of ER. Remember that from way back when with George Clooney? I do. Line about, any other the ABC here, uh, it was speaking of all that merchandise, the ABC sort of protected very carefully a lot of their other uh, programs. Right. And protected the Right. And, um, so released a lot of um, merchandise. Right. All the stuff that I've got that cardboard box. Oh, I see. You still have. Well, if uh, if like the video takes, you're looking to ditch them. You can always send some to London. Um, <laughs> uh, I would make very good use of them. Um, so, um, talk to us about uh, what it was like actually working on set. I know so many people. You know, have so many stories um, to tell. Um, it must have been great fun working with the cast. You know, working on the stories. What was it like working? You know, behind the scenes. They were a fantastic group of people. Not just the cast, but the right. crew too. They were all fantastic. The cast also because uh, part of the audition process. <laughs> excuse me. 
But right. you know, I chat to the um, producer and make sure you know that we were on board with such an idea and that we could convey a character through a big costume that's going to heat up a lot of movement. But also, I guess they wanted to find that we would be um, patient and good natured and cheerful because it's going to be uh, a pretty uncomfortable shoot. Costumes are going to be difficult to wear, very hot, so the mm. studio was kept freezing cold. They were right. in the air conditioning way down. And our poor crew, who were fantastic, they were dressed like they were going to ski. Right. They would have thick fingers, gloves, scarves. We'd, be, we'd pull off the costumes and be sweating in t shirts and shorts. Right. Um, but the poor crew would be you know, bone numbingly. Cold. Yeah, yeah. So to, to, to keep us from uh, you know, not, not fainting in the heat that our costumes were generating. Right. Was it a conscious... Yeah, but that's, 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 it was always a, 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 a show that was more fun to think about than to actually... <laughs> right, I can imagine that, yeah. Because I was thinking, was it a conscious effort to change the costumes, you know, each time you produced a new series? Uh, I remember the bananas costumes got modified after the first bunch of episodes. The right. original episode, we were totally zipped into it. Right. Um, so there was no air coming in or out. Right. And in any break, they would rip our little collars open and stick a fan inside. Oh, right. Right. And then they had the bright idea, they remodified it and it became like one big the headpiece and the, the coat was like a jumper. Right. Right. Um, do you see? Do you ever see a potential market for you know that coming back in its original form? Now it's been thirty years. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, as times move on, people have new ideas. Right. I know. I've never seen it. I know there's a show Bluey. I think that's gone around the world too. Right. Uh, come out of Australia. Um, let them see the the next big thing for the kids. It's, it's right. huge for the toddlers here and I'm right. pretty sure that's going to have to roll through. So, uh, right. No, I guess the old days of, of uh, adults dressing up in big fur costumes like right. that might be gone forever. Oh, well, well, to the one person listening, sorry to disappoint you. We thought the internet was going to go poof there, but it's no. And sadly, that's the reality of 2022, really. But the good thing is we have online, we have streaming platforms, we have YouTube, and, of course, we still have the DVDs um, and the old VHS tapes, if you can dig them out. As I was saying about, um, you know, uh, people forgetting uh, the Bananas in Pyjamas, that could never be, but does it become, and I think you're going to know what I'm going to ask you now, does it become more difficult to, as time goes on to do B2's voice? Um, well, I, I haven't done it for years. Um, Now's your opportunity. I, I, don't, I don't do the animation. <laughs> right. Uh, so, um, I don't know, I used to do how did it go? <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? <laughs> Sort of a there you go. You sort of need the. Uh, we, we need B1 here with us. Um, brilliant. Um, that the internet's gone wild now because we've just heard B2 again in the flesh after 30 years. He has emerged. He's still alive, people, um, and he's here right now. Um, yeah, it must be lovely and humbling when. Because um, I guess also for uh, an actor who's primarily known for, you know, the stage and doing voices, it must be quite nice to be able to sort of walk down the street and people don't instantly recognise you and then as soon as you sort of open your voice and go ho 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 and do that sort of B2 voice, it must be quite, uh, it must be quite nice to have that sort of intimacy. Um, it, I, I, I don't know, I mean, I never bring it up, but, but right. if anyone, it, it, it comes up, you know, I'm comes up in conversation, people, if I'm introduced, it's, you know, within a day or two. Right. And, and now that um, if I work with an actor in their, you know, twenties or something like right. that, give them a couple of days and someone's told them, yeah, the right. And they'll, I can't believe it, you know, I used to watch them when I was yeah, yeah. 
uh, yeah, just, uh, look, I'm happy for it to have been a, a big part of my life. I love the fact that you described it as a happy episode of your career, which was lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, I enjoyed it a lot. And, um, you know, uh, it would have been terrific if my career had gone bigger in other right. ways, but I'm very happy that we would be a part of You can't get bigger than a banana, trust me. <laughs> yeah, it's something that yeah. a, lot to, a lot of people, a lot right. of people. Right. Exactly. Uh, and you mentioned earlier, uh, moving, sort of, parking the bananas aside, but you you mentioned earlier about uh, your... Uh, talk about them for a long time. Yes, exactly. Uh, we could talk uh, about them for hours on end. Okay. Um, but uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, your little, what well, we say stint, but it was, uh, uh, I think it was two years that you worked on Neighbours, wasn't it? I, I, I did uh, one year. One year, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, so I moved from Sydney to Melbourne to move into Ramsey Street. There we go. I'm curious then because, because I'm still, you know, I come off the bananas in, in that kind of environment um, into another TV show. It was a whole other, you know, I thought, will, will I see familiar with the TV? Right. It, 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 it was very strange to be in a studio without a big costume. Right. Um, well, you were moving on to adult territory, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. That was another good experience. Uh, I was, um, yeah, it was, it was still a very popular show. Yeah. It was not as big then as it had been in the Kylie day. Right. But it was still, still very popular here at the time. Right. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot of the actors who were in it. Right. I you don't use them, but now there's a dance. That was a big yeah, yeah, yeah. Fill out for the costume. Yeah. Without that, like you know, the close up on your face. You know, yeah. And the first few episodes, the director would tell me, pull it back, pull it back. Just think, think the line. You don't have to demonstrate it. Just let it come through. Right. Um. Yeah, so um, other other challenges in there. Yeah. And of course, after. After a milestone of Neighbours, it is uh, coming sadly to an end very soon. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, uh, it's not on a show that I'm close to anymore, but, right. um, but I'm very happy to have been a part of it. Yeah. Most Australian actors were right. at some stage. Um, it had a pretty good run. What is it? Yeah, when was that go? 30 odd years? Yeah. Maybe even longer. Absolutely, I think 1985 or something like that. Before we sort of wrap up this podcast, I know it's quite late for you, and I thank you for staying up. Uh, still dressed and not in your pyjamas, I must say, um, which is brilliant. Um, who knows, he might not wear pyjamas. He may be completely opposite to his character, who knows. I don't wear pyjamas, I haven't worn pyjamas all my adult life. There we go. I mean, well, I'm not surprised, you must have been sick of wearing pyjamas after having to work in them every day. There you go. Uh, certainly no stripes involved at all. Um, so, talk to me uh, a little bit, and I ask this to all my guests, and I'll be quite fast. I was fascinated to hear you just a moment ago talk about Bill and Ben. Um, talk to me a little bit about the uh, growing up of a young little Nick, what it was like for you in terms of the television that made you before you were on the box, you know, being this big children's TV megastar. The best thing that uh, Australian TV did in the, I guess, the late 60s when I was uh, right. seven, eight years old, right. was a, an ABC thing called Adventure Island. Okay. Like, um, some kind of, I think at the beginning of the episode, you like, drifted away on a magic boat or something and ended right. up in some strange culver stack of the pirates and, and flower pot people and clowns and I can't remember what the episodes were right. because I don't think they existed I think the only thing videotaped re reused all the videotapes oh right so, um, <laughs> back when you could do that yeah I don't know yeah right <laughs> yeah um, only probably moments of it now exist on YouTube 
Wow. Well, uh, I shall be watching that tonight in your in your honour. Thinking, ah, yes, my guest watched that when he was younger. Um, Adventure Time. But even then, I don't, I don't know how long, how many episodes that last. Right. Or what years? Because it was like 1970. Right. I know uh, Jason Donovan's mother was in it. Okay. A little. A little bit of information there. Might have been a bit of a useless information, but it was good information. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, be, you'll be very good on a panel show we have over here where we just chat about random, useless bits of information. We spoke about Jason Donovan's mother. <laughs> uh, well, it's, you've, gone, uh, you've gone banana brain. There we go. Um, right. So that's me with me useless puns. Um, what an honour it has been to cross over to you. I know it's late where you are, it's early where I am, if people can tell. No, I haven't been on an all-night slash. Uh, it's just a little bit early if my voice does sound croaky. Um, but it was worth it because uh, I got to chat to somebody that certainly, you know, on a personal level, really made my childhood what it was. Um, and it certainly would never have been the same if it wasn't for the Bananas in Pyjamas. Long may... Uh, they reign in whatever form they come in, if it's animation, perhaps if it's, uh, you know, perhaps if we get the series back again. There you go, That that we'll just have to live with that. I think, you know, people will be quite happy to, to re-watch the old scratched VHS tapes, definitely. I'm so happy. It's been a really joyous experience talking to you. And uh, as most of my guests do, if you would give me the honour of signing out as the one and only B2, that would be a real honour and a pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Sunshine or in game, the fun we'll have will be really grand.